Hi, it's Sora here from Wizards Code. Let's create a terrain, a procedurally generated terrain, completely random. You'll be able to walk in this terrain forever. We're going to do this in two, maybe three videos. The first one, we're going to focus on the terrain and the grass. The second one, we'll focus on the trees and the rocks in the environment. And then the final one, we'll add in some weather effects and we'll really tune up the lighting and create some lovely effects like this one in the evening. Let's get going. So we have a brand new scene. We're going to add in 3D object map magic. Then we're going to create a graph, store that in the my stuff folder. And once we have that, we'll be able to view our terrain, which will be flat at the minute. We will have to increase the far clip plane on the camera. Once we've done that, we'll be able to go in and start editing the map. We'll insert a noise node and map that straight into our height. So what we see now is a terrain with height. We can then play with the noise settings on that to create a terrain that looks a little bit more realistic than just noise. So now we can add in some other noise, this time Veroni, and we'll blend that in with the base noise that we have here, and that will give us some ridges. It's very extreme right now, but if we play around with the settings, we'll be able to make it look a little bit more mountainous. Let's quickly set up a group for our height map nodes and that way we can move them around and manage them in our graph. So now we have our basic shape for the terrain. We want to fine tune it a bit and this is really a matter of playing around with the different nodes. Here I'm using a curve node to change the steepness of some of the slopes and kind of make a little bit more of a natural environment that, that we're going to expect to see. And this really is a matter of just trial and error, especially as you're learning the nodes. Just try things out, see what they look like, put things in, take them out. But one of the most useful nodes is this one, the erosion node. This really gives some texture to the terrain that you've got. It simulates the rainfall and the sediment carrying and so on that, that rain would do. And again, just play around with the different settings. Everything is reversible, so don't be afraid. Keep mucking about, see what you come up with. So once I've got the basic shape together, I like to add in some additional noise, which creates some kind of uh, undulations, if you like, in the main terrain. So I do that after all of the main creation and just before we create the final height map. And what you get is something that looks like this. So that's the height map done. Now we'll create a portal so we can keep our graph tidy. And we'll use that portal for the next section, which is to create a new output node for our textures. So let's create that and then we'll do the same as we did before. We'll just play around with different nodes to apply the textures in different parts of the map. And so we'll use curves and we'll use slopes. And what we'll end up with is a fully textured height map. In order to make this easier and visualize what's going to happen, it's a really good idea to use the preview feature that you find on nodes. That way you can see where the texture is going to be applied according to the node that you currently have selected. And you can see that happening here. As with all things in Map Magic, because it's procedural, you can just experiment and everything is going to be reversible. You'll be able to get back to what you had before if you need to, and you'll end up with a texture that you're happy with, and later on we may come back again and play with it. And indeed, in this map, I realise later that's exactly what I need to do. But before we get there, let's create some grass on our terrain. So we need an output node, which is going to be grass. And then we'll take a portal from the green grass texture and use that to define where the grass grows. We can play around with the density settings and so on on the grass texture. And that will enable us to increase the amount of grass that we see, fairly obviously. Now, one thing to note is at this point, I am actually using the wrong setting on this grass node. We should be using the billboard setting. Later on, we will spot that and we will fix that. But for now, we will have to make do. We also find that the texturing doesn't actually work the way we want to here. So we play around with the texturing nodes and we change the way that it actually um, looks on the terrain in order to get the grass into the right place. And we then find that, in fact, we want to use the grass yellow texture as well, because otherwise it's going to be kind of uh, fairly sparse in the lower areas and not so much grass on the hills, which doesn't look very natural. 
In order to do that, we're going to create a new portal from the grass yellow and then use that down in our grass output by using the blend node. And then we're going to make sure we don't get any on the cliff faces by subtracting the cliff layer from that blend node. And what we end up with is a good coverage of grass across our whole scene, including the hills, but avoiding the cliffs. Perfect. And here it is in its fully rendered glory. The grass in the foreground here is great, but the hill is very bare in the background. And as you see it coming over the ridge here, the grass is disappearing. That's because of the detail distance we have set. We're going to address that in a minute. But the hills in the far distance, that's just bad texturing. And we won't fix that for quite a while, but we will fix it later. Let's fix the detail distance first. So go to the Map Magic object, expand out the trees, details and grass properties and just set the detail distance. We'll set it to 120 for now. Now let's add in some more details. So Map Magic 2 comes with a few different things you want to use in details. We've used the sedge grass. Now we're going to add in some nettles. And we don't want these all over. We want to use the noise to create a well, a noise pattern on the terrain. So we're going to use the output of the blend here, but we're going to merge that in with some of the noise that we're going to have. And that will just create spots of nettles across the terrain. As you can see, I experimented with a number of different nodes to try and get this right. As ever, just play until you're happy. And the last thing we're going to do on the details is use the last of the free assets that come with Map Magic 2, which is the chamomile flowers. So add in a new detail node, they call it a grass node. Use the chamomile flowers and then play around with your nodes. And you can see on this particular one, I tried quite a few different ways of figuring out how to get the flowers in and looking right. And this is what makes Map Magic's procedural generation really attractive to me. I'm not an artist and being able to just try things and then undo them using this digital tooling is making me feel like an artist. So go have fun. Don't be afraid of it. And this is what we have at the end of this session. All of this is created with the free Map Magic 2 tools. To do the next stage, which is to add the trees in, we're going to need a paid part of the Map Magic 2 things. It's not expensive, but it does cost money. Um, nevertheless, it is well worth it. You can throw together a scene like this very quickly. So in the next video, we're going to add the trees, then we'll add the weather and the lighting. See you soon.